Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark, the Sim Hangar for all things flight sim related. And today we're configuring the Bravo Throttle Quadrant for use with the default jets and airliners in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're looking for information on how to configure the props, then you'll need to watch this configuration guide. I'll leave links to this video in the notes below and also above. That video also contains a chapter, The Basics. And I would recommend that you watch that three and a half minute portion before continuing with this configurator. As it shows how we built our basic template and it's this template that we'll start off with in this video. So just a quick recap. The default profile for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant is a two engine prop. My configuration already has the LED light drivers installed as well as the fix for Throttle 2, which is not working currently in the default profile. We've created a new or master profile, Bravo Tango Quebec Dash Template, with all fixes applied and the switch panel on the Throttle Quadrant reconfigured. Before we start our configuration, let's set up the Bravo Throttle Quadrant as indicated. On Axis 1 on the left, the spoiler or air brake. On the right, on Axis 6, the flap lever and on axis 2 through 5, your throttle or thrust levers. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, we want to go to the Options menu and then Controls. Once in Controls, choose the Bravo Throttle Quadrant and choose our new template, Bravo Tango Quebec Dash Template. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm assuming that we are starting from our modified default profile. Of course, this configuration can be done from any profile. For example, if you've already set up your prop profiles, you may find it simpler and easier to set up from a single engine configuration. The only difference or variance would be the number of axes that one would have to reconfigure or delete. The choice is yours. The template file is basically our master file, which we'll use to build future profiles. Click on Preset Manager and then Duplicate. We're going to create a new profile for the 4-engine jet. You can rename it to whatever your preference is. I'm going to call mine 4-engine jet, just so that it's easy to find. Once done, click OK and we're ready to start configuring. Note the active profile under the Bravo Throttle Quadrant has changed to 4-engine jet. We're now ready to start configuring and we'll start by getting rid of those bindings that we no longer require. So with our filter on the left hand side on a side, let's go to power management and mixture. So let's find mixture one axis, click in the box and clear current input and validate and it's gone. We'll do the same for mixture two axis. Click on the binding, clear current input and validate. We also need to delete the decrease mixture one and two binding. Airliners and heavies have a different fuel management system. That's great, mixture's gone onto propeller. Under propeller, we're gonna again delete all entries. So axis number one and axis number two to be deleted. We click on the binding, clear current input, and we validate. And we need to do the same for toggle feather switch one and toggle feather switch two. So we've now deleted entries for the mixture and propeller. Under throttle, we already have throttle one and throttle two shown. So all we need to do is rebind those functions to the new axes. So for throttle one, click on the binding. Now we're not going to delete this entry, we're going to overwrite it. Click in the scanning box and then move throttle one on the Bravo throttle quadrant. And it picks up that axis. It shows a warning that throttle two axis is already bound to that axis, which was the case with the twin engine prop configuration. But that's okay, we can go ahead and confirm our configuration by hitting validate, as we'll shortly be overwriting the throttle two axis as well. We can demonstrate the conflict here, but the problem's easily rectified. Let's click on throttle two axes. Click in the scanning box and overwrite the current configuration by moving throttle 2 on the quadrant. Choose validate and the problem is solved. We can demonstrate this by moving throttle 1 and then throttle 2. They're operating independently, as they should. We now need to go ahead and delete throttle 1 decrease and throttle 2 decrease bindings. And again we'll click on the binding, clear current input and validate. That's done, let's now go ahead and bind throttle 3 and throttle 4 axis. 
Let's change the filter on the right hand side away from assign to all. We can collapse the mixture and propeller bindings. We're not interested in those and go to throttle. And we're looking for throttle three access. We click in the box and again start scanning and move throttle three on the Bravo throttle quadrant. It's picked it up and validate. And don't forget to click reverse access. All throttles need the reverse access box checked, but not spoiler or flaps. And we're now going to do exactly the same for throttle four access. Move throttle four on the quadrant. It's picked it up and validate. And once again, don't forget to click the reverse access as it is a throttle. We can do a quick check on our configuration so far by changing the filter to assigned. And there it shows us all the throttles. And we can then move them independently and just do a cross check that everything's working as expected. That's all looking good. Before we move on and set our reverses, let's set our spoiler or air brake and our flaps. And rather than scrolling through all different menus and different options, I'm going to use the search by name function. This is much quicker and easier and we'll start with the spoilers. So under the search by name on the left hand side, I'm going to type in spoiler. Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't use the term air brake. There it is, spoiler access. So we'll click in the box, start scanning and move the spoiler on the throttle quadrant and validate. Let's now do exactly the same thing for the flaps. Clear the search bar and I'm going to type in flaps. And the binding that we're looking for is flaps access minus 100 to 100%. Click in the binding box, then start scanning and we'll move the flap lever on the quadrant. It's picked it up and now we can validate. And a quick reminder for both flaps and spoilers, we don't need to reverse the axis. Let's now get those reverses configured. Filter is set to all and we're looking again for throttle. Make sure you clear the search by name box. And we're looking for throttle one decrease. There it is. Click in the binding box and start scanning. On the quadrant, pull the small lever up and back down again on throttle one. It's joystick button nine. Validate. And that's set. Now I need to do the same for throttle two. So throttle two decrease and click in the binding box. And on the quadrant on throttle two, we're going to move the small reverse lever up and back down again. Joystick button 10 in this instance. Validate and we'll do exactly the same for throttle 3 and for throttle 4. So it'll be throttle 3 decrease and throttle 4 decrease. Just a point to note that when moving these small reverse levers up and down, make sure you don't accidentally move one of the axes, otherwise it will pick that up. You only want the small reverser levers to register. We're all done, so don't forget to apply and save and let's put it to test in the Boeing 747. Let's first test the four throttles independently. That seems to be working exactly as it should. Let's now test the reverses again independently. And now the reverse on thrust lever number four. To take it out of reverse, push the reverse levers forward and then just nudge the throttle slightly forward. And the 747 pops out of reverse. There are a number of ways you can configure this. I found this the easiest. Let's now see the reverses in action with the external view. Let's head back to our controls menu. Using our 4 engine jet profile as the template, Click on Preset Manager and Duplicate and let's now create a new profile to Engine Jet. Click on OK to save the profile. And we're going to follow the same process as we did last time by deleting the axes that we no longer require. So with a filter set to Assigned, under Power Management and Throttle, we will want to delete Throttle 3 and 4. But first let's set up our Throttle Quadrant. 
For the two engine jet we're going to be looking for this configuration. To make sure we get the right levers we're going to initially remove throttle 2 and throttle 4. I'm then going to move throttle 1 over by one axis to the right so that it's centralized. There it is and let's just push it into place. Throttle 3 will remain on the same axis, but I've removed it temporarily to highlight that it is slightly different as it functions as throttle 2 in a two-engine setup. Rotate the top handle. The thrust reversers should be facing each other. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and delete throttle axis number 3 and throttle axis number 4. Then we will reassign the axes to throttle 1 and 2. We highlight the unwanted functions and click clear input and then validate as we did before. We also need to delete throttle 3 and throttle 4 decrease. Again clear input and validate. Now let's reassign throttle 1 and 2 as our profile is still holding the 4 engine jet profile. First of all throttle 1 and we click in the binding box and this time we're going to overwrite it. Click in the box to scan and then move throttle number 1. Once again we get the error message but we know we're okay because we're going to reassign that so click validate and let's reassign throttle number 2. Following the same process we now move throttle 2 through its axis. It picks it up and then validate. We can now do a quick test and just make sure everything's working independently and as expected. It all looks okay. So now we need to reassign the reverses for throttle 1 and 2 to the correct axis. Click on the binding for throttle 1 and then the scanning bar. And we just toggle the small reverser lever. It's picked it up, we're okay so we can validate, ignoring the error message. Now to reassign throttle 2 decrease, we follow the same process, scan, move the reverser lever and validate. We can do a quick check, everything looks okay. Now let's click apply and save and then let's jump into the sim and see how it works with the Dreamliner. Once again I can start off by testing the throttles and although I don't show it here I've tested the air brakes or spoiler and the flap as well. Thrust levers are working fine, now let's test the reverse thrusters for thrust lever number 1 and 2. And once again to take them out, pull the reverse levers forward and just nudge the throttle slightly. And once again let's take a quick external view. You'll find the two biz jets included with Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Cessna Citation CJ4 and the Longitude are also compatible with the two engine jet profile that we've just set up. To finish off we're just having a quick look at the A320 and is currently operating with the default two engine setup that we've just created. And as you can see it's operating fine. Air brakes and flaps working as expected and the throttles as well. The difference between the Boeing and the Airbus however is the Airbus has a physical reverse thrust range. By engaging the reversers it will default and go into reverse and disengage from reverse in the same way. There is a way we could make this a little bit more realistic. Let's head back to the control panel and our two engine jet profile. And because we're going to do slight modifications we're going to set up a separate profile for the A320. So to the preset manager duplicate and let's rename. In this instance I'm going to be particularly inventive and I'm going to call it the A320neo. No surprises there then. Once we've renamed it hit OK and let's get back to the configurator. And there's only one major change that we want to make and that's to the reverse thrust actions. So back to power management and then to throttle. And the idea is to activate the reverse range in the Airbus. So click on throttle 1 decrease and we're going to overwrite what's there. We're going to use a combination of bindings for the reverse thrust. Click in the scanning box and move the reverse thrust lever. But we're only moving it up. Now move throttle 1 past the D10 position all the way down. 
Then I'll return it to idle and push the reverse lever forward. We now have a combination of bindings for the reverse function. Validate and we're going to carry out exactly the same for throttle to decrease. Click in the scanning box, move the reverse lever, throttle past detent and return, then flick the reverse lever forward again. Validate and we're done. All that remains for us to do is to apply and save this profile and let's go try it out. Now if we just move the reverse levers past the detent into the reverse position, nothing happens. And if we just raise the reverser lever, same thing. So to activate it, we need to raise the reverse lever and push the throttle back past the detent position all the way down. And now the reverse is activated. To get it out of reverse, again we push the reverse lever forward and return the throttles to idle. And there we have it, it's just another option for configuring the reverse for the A320. The three configurations that we've covered today allows you to fly all the default jets in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There are of course other ways to configure the jets and the various key bindings, but today I think we've covered all the basics required to get you up in the air and having some fun. I'm mainly a GA person myself, but I certainly do enjoy a little bit of time in the airliners from time to time. And to be honest, I've got a growing fondness for the A320. And there's a number of mods out, one in particular that certainly improves the A320 at this time. Do you have a favourite jet in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Look after yourselves, take care, see you soon and bye for now.